Well, hello, COS supporters, and welcome back to another episode of COS Live. My name is Andrew Woodruff. I'll be your host for this episode. And of course, I am joined by the lovely Rita Peters, who is my co-host, but she's also the Senior Vice President of Legislative Affairs. Rita, how are you today? I'm great. Can't wait to talk to today's guest. Me too. I'm happy to be here with you, Rita, and I'm also happy to be with our guests who are tuning in right now. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. We want to know what state you're tuning in from. So drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. While you're at it, please send out a like, a rumble, a retweet. Uh, we need to get the message out about Convention of States and about the secret weapon that our founding fathers gifted to us. And of course, I'm talking about Article 5 of the U.S. Constitution. So blast it out on your social media pages, and we will certainly get more people involved in this movement. Uh, a few weeks ago, uh, we reported at least 30 or more uh, COS volunteers, uh, grassroots activists who showed up to testify on behalf of our COS resolution that was in Massachusetts. And we garnered a stunning victory there out of the committee. We're going to be joined today by our chief sponsor uh, in uh, the Massachusetts State Legislature. Um, we're going to be joined by Steve Xeros, who is a Gold Star father. And he's going to join us with reaction and just to share a little bit of his story we have our Article 5 trivia giveaway with COS Vice President Mike, uh, Mike Ruthenberg. Uh, but before we get to uh, the updates that we have for today, I think it would be great, Rita, if you could give us another legislative update. I'd be happy to do that. And Andrew, you know, we've already had two states join the Convention of States movement already this year. Nebraska and Wisconsin bring us to 17 states. So we're halfway to that constitutional threshold of two thirds of the states calling for an Article 5 convention for proposing amendments that impose term limits, fiscal restraints and limits on federal tyranny. And there are several more states that right now are in that race to be number 18. On Thursday, the Iowa Senate State Government Committee advanced our resolution by an eight to five vote. It next goes to the full Senate. And let's just watch a video clip of that moment. We have an opportunity here to be part of a very historic event. And I think that most of us would agree that the federal government is out of control. Um, we have an opportunity here to do something about that. And I think it's we're going to take that opportunity here today. I would urge all of this body to uh, vote in favor of Senate Study Bill 3090, 38, no, excuse me, 2002. Senator Guth moves SJR 2002 as amended. All in favor of the bill vote aye. 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 All opposed vote no. No. SJR 2002 as amended has been uh, approved. SJR 2002 as amended moves the counter as committee bill under Rule 40. Later that same day, the Kansas House Committee on Federal and State Affairs heard testimony on our resolution. Senator Rick Santorum was in Topeka to testify in favor, as well as several of our COS Kansas volunteers. Now, Andrew, I do have a piece of bad news, which is that the South Dakota Senate declined to vote on our resolution. After the House passed it by a huge 39 to 30 margin, although this means our resolution won't be heard in the South Dakota legislature until next year, South Dakota volunteers made tremendous progress this year, and they are already pushing forward with an aggressive strategy to impact the 2022 elections and then finally get this done next year. They are not nearly finished. Now this week, we're looking forward to a hearing in the South Carolina Senate that will be in a, a subcommittee of the Judiciary Committee. So tune in on Wednesday at 1130 Eastern Time to watch that live. Now remember, we've already passed in the South Carolina House, so we're already halfway home in South Carolina. And that wraps up my report for today, Andrew. Let's go now to Mike for today's Article 5 Trivia Giveaway. Thank you, Rita and Andrew. Of course, I'm glad to be here. 
It's a momentous time in COS history. I'm so glad you guys are holding down the fort and sharing the great news with everybody. There's so much to be discussed. There's so much going on and there's so much to learn because more and more people are coming on board. If you're brand new to us and this is one of your very first Facebook lives, you'll start to understand the things that are most important. And that's part of what my job is, is to riddle you with all kinds of trivia questions that matter about article five and what's going on and i've got a good one today and one of the things that we do to grease the skids is we give away cool stuff like this shirt faith over fear i have a long sleeve faith over fear should i you can have one of those but if you want a different color maybe and you want a short sleeve shirt faith over fear you can have that you can pick how about that because we have another new one no mask no fear. I don't wear a mask. I don't have fear. Love that shirt. And this one is super popular in the organization. Let's go, Brandon. It helps people to understand exactly how you feel about our current presidential administration. So you get to pick your prize today if you win our question. And for today, you know, some of you are math people and you think, oh, yeah, well, I know numbers really well. And you might win because of that. Others, eh, maybe not. You might have to look it up or figure out another way. But remember, anybody can win. And if you don't, if you don't win the shirt of your choice today from the store, just go there and pick up a shirt because we have such a huge variety. On Friday, we're actually going to be putting some of these new shirts in there. So if you don't see them quite yet, you'll get to choose from some of the other ones but you can get the scoop and be one of the very first people to wear a faith over fear shirt if you like it as much as I do. Otherwise, go to shopconventionestates.com, shopconventionestates.com, and you can get your shirt or whatever else you like from there. So here's the question. Wisconsin and Nebraska put us at 17, which is halfway to our goal based on what the Constitution says of calling the first ever Article 5 Convention of States and put the federal, uh, anyway, the federal government back into the constitutional box that our constitution designed it for. And anyway, what is the fraction of states needed to call a convention per Article 5 of the Convention of States? What is the fraction? And that's my question for today. And I'll be back later in the show. And I'll be able to tell you the answer to that. You can probably easily find it if you look up the Article 5 itself. But until then, I will see you guys later. Back to you, Rita and Andrew. Thanks, Mike. Well, we have today on the program Massachusetts Representative Steve uh, Exaros. Uh, thank you so much for joining us, Representative. He's, uh, he represents uh, Massachusetts or one of the districts in Massachusetts. Uh, thank you so much for joining us. I want to jump right into my very first question. The Massachusetts Committee uh, passed the Convention of States resolution last week. So congratulations to you and congratulations to the many volunteers who helped uh, make this happen. As our champion in Massachusetts, uh, in the Massachusetts State Legislature, um, how did it feel to get this victory? Very proud. Uh, it's a team effort. You know, there's still a lot more work to go. But, uh, you know, remember everybody that's out there, we are Massachusetts. And uh, yes, we are a very blue state. But for me, it's all about service. I was a police officer for 40 years. 40 years, I got to work with heroes every day. I'm also a Gold Star father. I lost my son, Nicholas, uh, in Afghanistan, fighting as a Marine. And, you know, now I'm a rookie state representative, and I do the best I can just to, to be truthful and honest and, and diplomatic, but stick to the mission. And this is a big mission, and we need to get this done. And I would just say real quick in the beginning, remember, we're Massachusetts. This is where American freedom was born and will always be defended. Well, thank you so much. We want to talk more about your support for Convention of States, but we also want to hear more about you. You've talked a little bit about your background, 
Um, we know that you are a gold star father, as you mentioned, and we are so grateful for your son's service and sacrifice in defense of our freedoms. But tell us a little bit more about your story and what what it was in your background that um, impacted your decision to do this public service. That's a great question. Um, 40 years of policing, right? I started when I had a full head of hair and uh, back in the 70s, right? Five decades of policing. And I loved it. I loved every minute. I got to work with heroes every day. I'll always support law enforcement and law and order. That comes natural. Uh, but, you know, 12 years ago, I lost my own son fighting in Afghanistan, as you mentioned. And he came home to me in a flag draped coffin. I've never got to see his body or his face or heard his voice. Uh, we struggle with that as a family, but you, you try to pick yourself up and you choose your next mission. And uh, that was to help others and, and refocus on what it's like to be an American and, and you know, serve people in all kinds of ways, um, whether it's in this country or in Afghanistan. You know, we stand up for who we are and we shed our blood all over the world um, to protect freedom. And then uh, what happened really, the, the, the defining moment that drove me to leave the job I love was the murder of my police officer. So uh, April 12, 2018, you know, my officer, Sean Gannon, um, and a team of brothers and sister officers you know, deployed from my, my office and uh, they went to arrest a criminal who had 125 prior criminal charges in Massachusetts. He was selling fentanyl, uh, basically killing people. And uh, he had two illegal guns and it was, you know, the job of seven police officers to find him and, and bring him into custody. And, and when they went to this home, on that day, April 12th, they did not think he was in there, but there was information that he may have been in there. The people there lied and said he wasn't. And when they searched the home, um, the shots rang out and uh, the first shot hit Sean in, in the head and, and he slumped over and the two officers that were next to him did their best to uh, get him out of the attic where they were. And the next shot hit uh, our dog, Nero, our police dog in the head, and uh, cut his windpipe and esophagus in half. And Sean lay there bleeding, and the, the dog lay there bleeding as well. And uh, I heard them screaming for help on the radio, and I drove as fast as I could to get to that scene. And, you know, my officer, Sean, uh, you know, we did our best to save him, but uh, he died in the hospital, and our, our dog, Nero, was trapped in the house. And the SWAT team did their job. They got the suspect out. I'll never forget him coming out. You know, he had killed our officer. Uh, he shot our dog. We didn't know where the dog was. And, uh, you know, I know what we all wanted to do. And uh, we did our job and took him into custody. And... Uh, and then the SWAT team went in, not knowing if there were more shooters in there. And then what I remember next is they came out with this dog, you know, Nero, uh, you know, shot in the head. Ga but he was alive. He was gasping for air. He was bleeding to death, swallowing his blood. And all the EMTs and all the paramedics that were there could not touch him. Uh, in Massachusetts, it's, a, it's not allowed to help an animal. So that moment put me in flashback mode of my own son killed in Afghanistan. And, uh, and you know, a week later, I'm, I'm handing a folded flag to Sean's mother. And uh, I said to myself, like, this is not going to happen again. And uh, I left the job that I love, I took a chance. I ran as a Republican in Massachusetts. Oh, I worked hard every day just stay true to who we are and uh, won. And my number one mission was to, uh, 
get that Nero bill and, you know, f make us all safer. And that's, that was the moment that led to me needing to leave to keep serving others with a purpose. And, uh, and that's what I do. Mm. What a just story. hearing, I, I know just hearing that story, uh, it, it's very moving. And these are the stories that, that we don't hear about. And you and so many others, you, you, you put your lives on the line without, without thinking. And just the, the duty that you have been given and that you followed through with, it's, it really, it, it just floors me, the, uh, the amount of service that you've given. So thank you for, for what you've done. Um, Amen. Thank you. It's, uh, it's my duty. Thank you. There are many others that do the same. You're, you're right. We should respect law enforcement. Where would we be without them? You know, I'm wearing Sean's hat. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, it took us three and a half years to bring the shooter to trial. Three and a half years we had to wait to try him. Mm -hmm. And we did. And he was found guilty of first degree murder and he's in prison. Mm -hmm. uh, and then it took us uh, up till last week we, when we got the Nero bill passed. And um, I can talk about that if you'd like. But uh, that was the number one mission. And then that took me to, you know, a different world. And I met Mike Arnold. And that's what brought me to you guys. And, mm -hmm. and well, you know, uh, many people out there, you know, there seems to be a, a lot of hateful rhetoric towards police officers and the, men, the brave men and women who sacrifice and who put everything on the line to protect us. But a lot of people, I would say an overwhelming majority, believe that police officers are good and that we're, what they're doing is right. And a majority of Americans will rally around that. Um, yeah. Yeah, and, and that leads me to like ask about Convention of States too, because you know, in a time when we're so divided as a country, it, it seems like we can't agree on anything. We have polling that shows that a majority of Americans from the right and from the left, they want to see the federal government cut down. They want to see a federal government that is reduced and they support using Article 5 to do that. And we've, our polling shows that about two thirds of Americans agree with that. So why do you think um, Americans across the spectrum are agreeing on this one idea, Article 5, calling a convention when they can't agree on anything else? It's a great question. Uh, because that's what uh, most Americans want, just like when you talked about law enforcement, most Americans appreciate law enforcement. Uh, most Americans want their federal government um, limited. They want their taxes, you know, reduced. They want um, term limits. They would rather work and uh, and earn their money and you know uh, help others in in a in a in a in a good you know purposeful way. I think that's how most Americans feel, but they're not all in government. And, and that's the lesson I believe is when you feel like the, this way, uh, like I, I disagree with you a little bit. I don't think America is as divided as the media mm. and others pointed out to be. That's kind of what they kind of want. But no, no, the average American loves our country, loves that flag. Uh, we we listen to others when when they may not support law enforcement or the flag but i always listen and uh i try to educate the real meaning of all this especially you know i'm born and raised in massachusetts i work in the people's house if you you know think about it i'm in the general court where sam adams you know john adams like these patriots that's where they worked and now I'm there and I'm proud to do that. But I think we, we just focus on, you know, what the average good American is thinking. It's good to listen to others, try to come together, find common ground. And I think this is common ground, but you got to work at it to bring people together. And part of it is your elected officials need to represent you. That's my job. I have 40,000 people in my district and they all don't think the same, but it's good to uh, have your issues and, and try to build support like you do, like what you're doing. And you'd be surprised how many people 
can learn and come together to do good things. Mm. Well, I'm going to come back in a few minutes and ask you to tell us about the Nero bill because I'm intrigued. <laughs> but before we get there, let's continue along this line because I have to tell you, when I heard that you had, you along with the grassroots team in Massachusetts, of course, had gotten this through committee, the Convention of States resolution in Massachusetts. I was absolutely stunned. So the question that we're all dying to hear the answer to is, how in the world did you do it? How did you convince your colleagues on that committee that Convention of States is good for Massachusetts and good for America? Great question. Uh, I think they, um, you know, when you have integrity, you just, you have to have integrity. So when you speak, it's not political, it's just, true. But uh, I would commend, you know, Michael Arnold, who happens to live, you know, not too far from me here on Cape Cod. And that team that you talked about, like I've, I've sat in on hundreds of hearings, right? I'm on the committees. I'm on five different committees. And you hear a lot of the same and you hear a lot of total opposites. That's democracy. People have the right to speak their mind. But the team that Mike and, and others put together, I've never seen anyone testify like that, where they didn't just kind of come on and repeat each other. Uh, they, they followed like along. They each took a piece of, of the statement, let's say. I thought that was very impressive. Um, so you had not only one person, you had a bunch of people from across the Commonwealth. We're, you know, we're 7 million people, 7 million uh, led by 200 elected officials. And uh, so that team, the power of all that over the Commonwealth, me being on the committee, I believe God put me there. And I believe my son put me there, Nick. And I believe Sean did too. Uh, you know, how did I end up winning? Only two Republicans in the state were elected in 2021. Uh, as far as new. So I, you know, in the position to do good, but really I think it comes down to the team, you know, the way we approached it. Uh, and I think the key people are the chairman. We have two incredible chairmen of that committee. They're Democrats, uh, but they're my friends. Uh, they, they believe in America. They believe in veteran things. We're, we're also uh, very heavily involved with veteran issues and uh, active duty military, both of those gentlemen, they're the chairs of this joint committee. One is a representative like me, the other is a senator, Rep. Uh, Paul McMurtry and Senator John Velas, are great men. And uh, it's really up to the chairman and the people on the committee to vote. We did. And it shows you, you can make things happen, but it's hard work and um, you stick to it. And sometimes when, the, when, it, when things are harder and you get it done, it feels way better because you really earned it. Mm. And I'm wondering if, um, if I could ask you about just, you, you kind of mentioned it at the, the, the hearing, just uh, the volunteers showing up and each having a little piece of the uh, testimony and not just, you know, saying the same thing over, over you know, like rehearsed lines, but having... Um, that true spirit for calling a convention and, you know, that true spirit of love of country. Can you just talk a little bit about the volunteers as a team? Um, what was it like working with them, kind of getting to know Michael Arnold um, and the other team members um, uh, in, the, in, the, in the Massachusetts State team? Um, and then maybe is there some methods that that team learned that they could share, that you could share, that other teams can, can use? Um, when they're um, working with their representatives. Excellent. Yes, uh, Mike Arnold, you know, he was at a Republican town committee meeting and uh, I was there, you know, it's a monthly meeting. He told his story, uh, he, you know, this mission. A lot of, I, I, I would think probably a lot of uh, representatives or senators may not even know uh, what it really is, but I, it was Mike Arnold going out to the community, working hard, telling the story, 
sticking with it. Because remember another thing, uh, we're really busy. Uh, you know, we're in this to serve others, or we should be at least. And I think many of them are. So we have 7,000 bills in Massachusetts pending. And you have, you know, a year and a half to he have hearings and push them through to the next step. 7,000 bills. So being organized is key. Um, and don't think just because you think it's a good idea that it's going to, you know, get traction. You have to work. So Mike Arnold and that team, they worked at it. And they, like you said, they didn't just, a lot of times, you hear different people, but they're just kind of saying the same story. And that's nice, but it's I thought it was really effective to kind of have a mission. And and what it also does is it shows our reps and our you know elected officials, it's not just Mike Arnold, you know, saying something or Stephen Exaros. Wow, you got all like 50 people all across the Commonwealth. I think that was key too. So not just people, let's say on Cape Cod, but spread them out all over the commonwealth now they tell their friends and uh it spreads it's it's that's democracy i believe mm -hmm. so it was very powerful i think as far as all how they did that you'd have to ask mike and, and some of the key leaders i was just honored that what happened was the rep that filed the bill uh left and Mike came to me and said, can you pick up the torch? I said, absolutely. And mm. that's what we did. Well, clearly that was providential. We are almost out of time, but I have two more questions I want to ask as we close. First of all, you talked as you were telling us about yourself and why you got involved in the legislature. Um, you talked about this Nero bill. So I have to ask you, what is it? I think that's a great question uh, for the future of America. You know, smaller scale in a way than convention of states, but it's real. Uh, in most states, if an animal, so Nero was our police dog, a beautiful two-year-old Belgian Malinois, you know, highly trained, loving animal. We have three at the police department in Yarmouth, and they're used to find missing children in the woods or elderly people who have wandered off, but they're also used to to uh, protect police officers when they're going after criminals like, like we did. And um, in Massachusetts, if one, if an animal is injured, EMTs and paramedics are not allowed to, to treat the animal and they're not allowed to put that animal in an ambulance. So I saw it firsthand what we did, the police officers put the dog in the back of a cruiser and a, and a doctor, a SWAT team doctor, jumped in the back and another police officer who raised Nero as a puppy put him in his lap and they stopped the bleeding the best they could and they tried to keep him alive. And uh, he lived. And uh, six days later, after sleeping in the cage with Nero, police officers took turn to sleep in the cage with the dog. Uh, he wouldn't eat and they tried to feed him. And uh, six days later, he was ready to come out. And I was honored to be there. We had Sean's cruiser brought to the scene because we said, we're gonna bring Nero home uh, in Sean's cruiser. And uh, when Nero came out, this beautiful dog skinny as a rail, shaved down, covered in stitches. I just saw his eyes. He was looking, looking. He saw the cruiser and he's looking for Sean, looking all around like, where is my partner? And uh, we opened the back door so Nero could get in and uh, he jumped in. And I just saw him licking the headrest where Sean should have been sitting. So that's you know, those are the things that drove me to make a difference. Mm -hmm. But the narrow bill now says, listen, if a uh, police dog is injured in the line of duty, you as an EMT and a paramedic, you can give that dog first aid. You can stop the bleeding. You can give an IV. You can do all the things that you would do for a human pretty much 
and you can put that dog in an ambulance and bring it uh, to the closest veterinary hospital uh, with oxygen and IVs treating the dog on the way there, just like you would a, a police officer. And that's what the bill says. And we got it passed. So we are, I believe, the 12th state in the nation to make it legal to do the right thing. Those are our, those are our loving animals, and they deserve the right to be saved when they're injured. Absolutely. What a wonderful bill. Congratulations on getting that passed. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this is self-governance in action. You saw a problem that needed to be solved. You didn't just complain about it. You got involved and you did something and you made a difference. Thank you so much. And before we let you go, last question, tell us what's next for Convention of States the resolution there in Massachusetts. What will happen next in the legislature? And what would you say to anyone who is watching today from Massachusetts? How can they help? Stay on top of it, right? Um, track the bill. So like we said, there's 7,000 bills. Most of them don't get out of committee, as you know. Um, so the next step is it goes to another part of the process, another committee, which is a huge step and uh, track that down. They can reach out to me if anyone in Massachusetts, reach out to my office. We will let you know where the bill's at. And we do the same thing, you know, uh, email, phone call, uh, work with the team to keep, keep that positive energy going to get it through. And, uh, you know, our, our hope is to get it to the governor. Um, and, you know, just, just, do what the people want and uh, be proud. Remember always, I always say, you be proud to be an American, the greatest nation on earth. And uh, I know it because I live here. I was born in Massachusetts and uh, my son died fighting for this country. Hmm. And um, that's what sacrifice is really about. Representative Ixaros, uh, thank you for joining us today. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you. Um, we need more people like you in state legislatures around the country. And it's just been an honor to talk to you, get a little bit of your story. We hope to have you back. And um, especially as, as, as more wins happen in Massachusetts with the resolution, we'd love to hear from you and the team. So thank you for joining us today. Amen. My honor. God bless both of you. And I hope to see you again very soon. Thanks. Keep up the good work. All right, we have our Article 5 answer with CUS Vice President Mike Ruthenberg. Mike, over to you. Wow, Rita, Andrew, another great show. Lots of great information. Again, if you're new to the COS or the Convention of States Live, welcome. We're so glad you're here. We hope that you find it to be as compelling as I find it to be. And I also want to show you again some of the prizes that we have for the person that wins our trivia. Of course, we have a long sleeve, Faith Over Fear shirt. Sure, we're advertising, of course, Convention of States on one side, the great American flag. People comment on that flag. Oh, yeah, it's so great you have a flag on there. And we have this shirt also in a short sleeve. We have different colors. So you can get a short sleeve shirt. You can get a Let's Go Brandon shirt which is super popular and two colors of no mask, no fear, which is a great shirt to wear in the airport when you're getting on a plane and you don't have your mask on and everybody else does because you're not afraid because the masks aren't doing anything anyway. So that's the prize. You can pick what you want. If you don't win, just go to shopconventionofstates.com. You can get your own shirt. Some of these won't be on sale until Friday. But there's tons of great shirts and lots of COS gear out there. So anyway, here is the question again, if you don't remember, but it takes a little bit of math. We're halfway because of the advent of Wisconsin and Nebraska. We're halfway to our goal of calling a first ever Article 5 Convention of States to put the federal government back into the box that the Constitution has made it to be in. What fraction? of the states is needed to call a convention is the question. What's the fraction according to Article 5? And if you are just figuring it out, 
that's great. If you already knew and you won, congratulations, because it's two thirds. Two thirds of the states must pass very similar applications. In other words, they must aggregate. They must basically say the same thing, maybe not the exact same words, but one of the cool things about the English language is you can say the same thing without using the same words. And that's what needs to happen. Ours are all so far going to aggregate. All 17 of them say substantially the exact same thing. And that's why we're so excited about what's happening. So two thirds of the states, once we get to 34 states, then boom, it doesn't take all 50. It only takes 34 states in order to trigger this convention. And then the Congress must, or they shall, according to the Constitution, call a convention for the purpose of proposing amendments. And if you're wondering, well, is that it? Once they decide what we have, we're done? No, that's not how it works, according to Article 5 of the Constitution. The way it works is if half of those that are at that convention, half the states, one state, one vote, they decide that this is a good amendment individually, then it goes out to the states. There's actually two ways it can be ratified. And once 38 states, again, one state, one vote, decide that it's going to happen, that's when it becomes part of our constitution. And the thing that's important to remember is that 27 amendments have been made to our constitution, a lot of great amendments. And that means then those were done using the first part of Article 5, where the Congress proposed the amendments, and then the same exact ratification took place to make it happen. So there's our trivia for the day. There's our little educational piece. Now back to you, Rita and Andrew, and thanks so much for the great work you're doing. Thanks, Mike. We do this show every week to reach, teach, and activate Americans with the constitutional empowerment gifted to we the people. The framers knew this day might come, and that's why they wisely included Convention of States in Article 5 of the Constitution. The time to save America is now. So if you're ready to do whatever is necessary to save the Republic, join your local COS team. Go to conventionofstates.com and click the Take Action tab to get started. Mm. And you need to get in this fight for liberty. It's essential that you that you not just be on the sidelines, but you get in, get on the front lines and, and fight for liberty. Um, after you go to the Take Action page, after you look through the, all, all the positions that we have available, uh, go to our social media pages too. Make sure you're following us and then like and share the content there. Also, get, get in the battle on social media. People need to hear about Convention of States. They need to hear about this amazing gift that the founders gave to us. Use social media as a tool to spread this gift that the founders gave us. You can uh, follow us on Rumble, MeWe, Facebook, Twitter, Parler, Instagram, Getter, and we're also on TikTok. Uh, if you want to listen to this program and other historic legacy content, you can go to the Convention of States podcast. Just search Convention of States wherever you podcast from. Text START to 54555 if you want to bypass big tech and get important COS messages. Again, that's uh, START to 54555. Check out The Battle Cry with COS President Mark Meckler. It airs every Sunday night at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, we will see you next Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern for another edition of COS Live. And remember, politics, it's not a spectator sport. You really want to make change. If you really want to make a difference, you have to get in the fight for liberty. You have to get in the game. Your country needs it. So please get in the fight. We'll see you next week. Take care.